So today we will be learning about panic disorder. Yesterday we learned about panic attacks. So today's video is about panic disorder. So panic disorder is anxiety disorder characterized by frequent and expected panic attacks along with fear of further attacks and possible restrictions of behavior in order to prevent such attacks. Panic disorder is most likely to arise during two phases of life, the teenage years or the mid-30s. The frequency of panic attacks varies from person to person and over time. The diagnostic criteria for panic disorder without agoraphobia is given below, like recurrent and expected panic attacks. At least one of the attacks has been followed by a one month or more or one or more of the following persistent concern about having additional attacks worry about the implications of the attack or its consequences like losing control having a heart attack going crazy so significant change in behavior related to the attacks then absence of agoraphobia then the panic attacks are not due to the direct physiological effects of a substance or a general medical condition the panic attacks are not better accounted for by another mental disorder. Then causal factors. Neurological factors that contribute to panic disorder and agoraphobia include a high sensitivity to detect breathing changes involving jovial emotions and the right frontal lobe, the amygdala and the hypothalamus too much not being a friend which increases heart and respiration rates and other aspects of the flight or fight response and a genetic predisposition to anxiety disorders. Psychological factors include conditioning of the body's bodily sensations of panic or of external cues related to panic attacks, highlighted anxiety sensitivity and misinterpretation of bodily symptoms of arousal as symptoms of a more serious problem such as a heart attack which can in turn lead to hypervigilance and fear of further sensations causing increased arousal. So social factors include greater than average number of social stresses during childhood and adolescence, the presence of a safe person which can decrease catastrophic thinking and panic and cultural factors which can influence whether people develop panic disorder. And treatments include medication, specifically benzodiazepines for short-term relief and antidepressants for long-term use. And CBT is the long-line treatment for panic disorder. Behavioral methods focus on the bodily signals of arousal, panic and agoraphobic avoidance. Cognitive methods, psychoeducation and cognitive restructuring focus on the misappraisal of bodily sensations and on mistaken indifference about the treatment that target social factors include group therapy focused on panic disorder and couples of family therapy particularly when a family member is a safe person then obsessive compulsive disorder this is something you might have already heard about so i'll be explaining this obsessive compulsive disorder or ocd is the anxiety disorder characterized by one or more obsessions which may occur together with compulsions Obsessions are thoughts, impulses or images that persist or recur and intrusive and therefore difficult to ignore and are inappropriate to the situation. So compulsions are the repetitive behaviors or mental acts that a person feels driving to carry out and that usually correspond thematically to an obsession. The obsession can cause great distress and anxiety despite a person's attempts to ignore or drive out the intrusive thoughts. The most common type of obsessions and compulsions are listed below, like type of obsession, contamination, like germs, dirt. So type of compulsion include washing frequently. Okay. Then order objects being disorganized, you know that can act as an obsession. Then compulsion include ordering will be the person will be performing ordering of you know things then losing control counting then doubt checking possible need okay. people with ocd or obsessive compulsive disorder 
recognize that the impulses of thoughts do not originate from an external source for example the thoughts aren't implanted by aliens from you know the outer space as some people with psychotic symptoms believe instead they realize that the thoughts arise in their own minds even though they can't control or suppress the thoughts symptoms build gradually until they reach a level that meets the diagnostic criteria over the course of a lifetime symptoms wax and wane becoming particularly evident in response to stress so either obsessions or compulsions are that okay then recurrent and persistent thoughts impulses or images that are experienced at some time during the disturbance as intrusive and inappropriate and that cause marked anxiety or distress the thoughts impulses or images are not simply excessive worries about real life problems the person attempts to ignore or suppress its thoughts impulses or images or to neutralize them with some other thought of thought or action a person recognizes that the obsessional thoughts impulses or images are a product of his or her own mind then compulsions are derived by repetitive behaviors like hand washing or drink checking or mental acts like you know praying counting repeating words silently and the person feels driven to perform in response to an obsession or accounting to rules that must be applied rigidly the behavior or mental acts are aimed at preventing or reducing distress or preventing some dreaded event or situation situation however these behaviors or mental acts either are not connected in a realistic way with that with what they are designed to neutralize or prevent or are clearly excessive at some point during the course of the disorder the person has recognized that the obsessions or compulsions are excessive or unreasonable the obsessions or compulsions cause marked distress are time consuming like take more than 1 hour a day are significantly interfere with the person's normal routine like occupational or academic functioning or usual social activities or relationships when the access one disorder is present the content of the obsessions or compulsions are not restricted to it the disturbance is not due to the direct psychological effect of a substance or a general medical condition causal factors neurological factors associated with ocd include disruptions in the normal activity of the frontal lobes thalamus and the basal ganglia lower than normal levels of serotonin and genetic vulnerabilities so psychological factors include negative reinforcement of the compulsive behavior which temporarily relieves the anxiety that arises from the obsession and cognitive biases related to the theme of obsessions social factors include socially induced distress which can influence the onset and course of the disorder and culture which can influence the particular content of obsession and compulsions then treatment include medications such as ssri or clomipramine the primary treatment for ocd is exposure with responsible response prevention cognitive restructuring to reduce the irrationality and frequency of the patient's intrusive thoughts and obsessions may also be employed family education or therapy targets social factors then generalized anxiety disorder or gad is the anxiety disorder characterized by uncontrollable worry and anxiety about a number of events or activities that are not solely the focus of another access one disorder the worry and anxiety among individuals suffering from generalized anxiety disorder primarily focus on family finance work and illness their worry is intruded into their awareness when they try to focus on their thought and they cannot stop worrying people with gad feel a chronic low level of anxiety or worry about many things moreover the fact that they constantly worry on itself causes them distress most people with gad also have comorbid depression the dsm ivtr diagnostic criteria is given below like excessive anxiety and worry occurring more days than not for at least 6 months about number of events or activities a person finds it difficult to control the worry the anxiety and worry are associated with three or more of the following six symptoms restlessness or feeling keyed up or on edge being easily fatigued then difficulty concentrating or mind going blank then irritability muscle tension sleep disturbance and the focus of the anxiety and worry is not confirmed confined to features of an access one disorder the anxiety worry or physical symptoms cause clinically significant distress or impairment in social occupational or other important areas of functioning
and substance or a general medical condition. Uh, the disturbance is not due to a, the direct physiological effect of a substance or a general medical condition. And causal factors, neurological factors include usually strong activation in the right front loop, abnormal activity of serotonin, dopamine and other neurotransmitters and a genetic predisposition to become anxious and or depressed. Then psychological factors that contribute to GAD include being hypervigilant for possible threats, a sense that the worrying is out of control and the reinforcing experience that worrying prevents panic. Social factors that contribute to GAD include stressful life, stressful life events, treatment and medication which targets neurological factors like CBT which targets psychological factors including breathing, retaining, then muscle relaxation technique, for exposure, cognitive restructuring, self-monitoring, along with problem solving, psychoeducation and or medication, meditation along with medication sometimes. So CBT may be employed in a group format. Then post-traumatic stress disorder. Post-traumatic stress disorder or PTSD is diagnosed when people who have experienced a trauma persistently re-experience the traumatic event, avoid stimuli related to the event and have symptoms of anxiety and hyperarousal. These symptoms must persist for at least a month. An event is considered traumatic if the individual experienced or witnessed an actual or threatened death or serious injury and responded with intense fear, helplessness or horror. Types of traumatic events are large-scale events with multiple victims and intentional acts involving smaller number of people and interpersonal violence. So interpersonal violence is more likely to lead to a stress disorder as are other events in which the trauma is severe of long duration and of close proximity. In PTSD, a traumatic event is thought to cause a pathological memory that is at the center of the characteristic clinical symptoms of the disorder. These memories are often believed brief fragments of the experience and are events that happened just before the moment with the largest emotional impact. And the person has been exposed to a traumatic event in which both of the following were present. The person experienced, witnessed or was confronted with an event or events that involved actual or you know, threatened death or serious injury or a threat to the physical integrity of itself. Of others. The person's response involved intense fear, helplessness or horror. The traumatic event is persistently re-experienced in one or more of the following ways like recurrent and intrusive stressing recollections of the event including images, thoughts or perceptions. Then recurrent distressing dreams of the event acting or feeling as if the traumatic event were recurring. Then intense psychological distress at exposure to internal or external cues that Symbolize or resemble an aspect of the traumatic event. Causal factors. High levels of norepinephrine, abnormal serotonin function and decreased the production of cortisol in response to the traumatic event. And psychological factors that exist before a traumatic event include a history of depression or other psychological disorder, a belief in being able to control stresses, and the conviction that the world is a dangerous place and lower IQ. After a traumatic event, classical and apparent conditioning contribute to the avoidance symptoms. Social factors include low socioeconomic status and a relative lack of social support for the trauma victim. Culture can influence the ways that individuals cope with traumatic stress. Treatment include medication, specifically an SSRI, then CBT, especially psychoeducation, then exposure, relaxation, breathing technique. Uh, or retaining and cognitive restructuring. Treatments that target social factors are designed to ensure that the individual is as safe as possible from future trauma and to increase social support through group therapy or family therapy. Then dissociative disorders. The central feature of dissociative disorders is dissociation, the separation of a mental process that is, you know, such as perception, memory and self-awareness that are normally integrated. Generally, each individual mental process is not disturbed 
but their normal integrated functioning is disturbed in contrast with schizophrenia it is mental it is the mental process themselves such as the form or pattern of thoughts that are disturbed so dissociation may arise suddenly or gradually and it can be brief or chronic four types of dissociative symptoms are noted as dsm iv like amnesia amnesia or memory loss which is usually temporary but in rare cases may be permanent then identity four problems in which an individual isn't sure who he or she is or may assume a new identity identity problems then derealization in which the external world is perceived or experienced as strange or unreal and the individual feels detached from the environment or as if viewing the world through invisible filters or a big pane of glass then depersonalization in which the perception or experience of self either one's body or one's mental process is altered to the point of feeling like an observer as though seeing oneself from the outside so occasional dissociating is a part of everyday life like we sometimes refer it as like you know um zoning out like that so for instance you may find yourself in a class but not remember walking to the classroom in some cases periods of dissociation are part of religious or cultural rituals as in possession trance so category of dissociative disorders for cases in which perception consciousness memory or identity are dissociated to the point where the symptoms are pervasive cause significant distress and interfere with daily functioning then dissociative amnesia is there is a dissociative disorder in which the sufferer has significantly impaired memory for important experiences or personal information that cannot be explained by ordinary forgetfulness the experience or information typically involve traumatic or stressful events and amnesia can came in came come on differently suddenly the memory problems in dissociative amnesia can take any of the several forms like generalized amnesia in which the individual can't remember his or her entire life selective amnesia in which the individual can remember some of what happened in an otherwise forgotten period of time and localized amnesia in which the individual has a memory gap for a specific period of time or for a period of time just before the stressful event So research has focused on two theories of how cognitive disturbances especially amnesia arise with dissociative disorders dissociation theory and neo dissociation theory both theories focus on how dissociation can arise in response to traumatic experiences specifically how the normal process of memory and its relation to other cognitive processes might be disrupted although neither theory can completely explain the phenomenon of dissociative amnesia both offer some insight dissociation theory posts that very strong emotions or occurrence in response to tra- traumatic stress and other focus of attention and also disorganized cognitive process which prevent them from being integrated normally according to this theory the poorly integrated cognitive process allow memory to be dissociated from other aspects of cognitive functioning leading to dissociative amnesia in contrast neo dissociation theory proposes that an executive monitoring system normally coordinates various cognitive symptoms much like a chief executive officer coordinates the various departments of a larger large company however in some circumstances such as while a person is experiencing a traumatic event the various cognitive systems may, can cooperate independently of the executive monitoring system when it occurs the executive system no longer has access to the information stored or processed by the separate cognitive systems memory this operates as an independent cognitive system as an amnestic barrier rise between memory and the executive system this barrier causes the information in memory to be cut off from conscious awareness that is dissociated next topic we will be learning tomorrow thank you for listening